is my new Evolve 3 Maestro $60 Windows laptop. And you can see here, it actually handles the Flex Radio software quite decently and on 50.313, six meters. Now, one of the things I found about this laptop is that it is bare minimum specs, including the storage and the fact that it has no ethernet. Well, the ethernet is a relatively easy problem to solve. I got this USB 3.0 ethernet adapter because I don't like to rely on Wi-Fi. It was like 14 bucks, 15 bucks at Micro Center and you know you just pick one up with the laptop so easy peasy lemon squeezy you get on ethernet and you have a reliable wired connection because at ham radio operators we know wireless can be unreliable okay you don't want your laptop screaming again again on wi-fi okay but the next thing that i found really minimal and that could use an upgrade is the storage. So the storage that comes with this laptop is a measly 64 gigabytes. And today we're gonna to upgrade that to 128 gigabytes. Plus we're gonna still have the 64 gigs internal. And we're not gonna use the SD card slot, believe it or not. We're gonna show you another route to get expanded storage on this $60 laptop. Now I chose 128 gig because it's all I need, but you can actually go to 500 gigs. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is acquire an SSD. And I got this Dogfish Technology SSD. It's an M2.2022. It must be SATA. You can't really use NVMe in this machine. It doesn't support it, or at least I figured that. But this SATA drive is pretty much a good bet. I use 128 gigabytes because it's cheap and because I really don't need more than that for my ham PC. So you buy that and links description in the description below. Of course, any M2.2022 drive will work. Next, you're going to want to take out the screws from this laptop. Now, pay attention. There are short and long screws. I found that you definitely have to figure out where they are. So any small screwdriver will work to take them out. And they do have thread locker on them. But, you know, I, I didn't apply any thread locker after I took out the screws. Once you take out the screws, the bottom case, you have to kind of like pry it loose. So use a flathead screwdriver and pry it loose and you're good to go. Once you're inside, you'll see the battery. You know, it's a typical lithium ion battery. If you ever need to replace it down road, but to be honest, I think I'll just be replacing this whole laptop, provided there's another $60 laptop. Please use the appointed chargers only. Yeah, right. Do not disassemble short circuit the battery, uh, destroying the battery by plugging it into Firesight, whatever. Okay, so here you see some of the thermals and you see this little card here. Now this is the cellular modem. You wanna definitely um, take note of that because you'll actually be removing this, but you start with removing these small cables here and those cables connect to the antenna. So you just remove them and put them aside. Next, you're going to unscrew this one screw and with that, you can then loosen the cellular modem. It pops right up. And then you can proceed to remove it. Now, once you remove it, you'll be able to have that slot freed up. That's an M2.2022. You can put in your dogfish drive or whatever. Now, this has memory made by SK Hynix, which is a Korean company. They actually make some good chips. They even make for Tesla and such too. So you can um, use that with confidence. Right. So you plug that in. Make sure you the label side is up because that's the correct one. I don't think it'll fit any other way. In any case, and you plug that in, right, firmly with the edge connector and make sure it goes all the way in, okay? And then next, we're gonna take the screw that we have there and we're going to put that in. Now that screw is the original one we removed, so you just put it in and you put it in gently, you give it enough force for it not to crack the circuit board, but just for enough for it to be secure. And then you move those antenna wires out the way because you really don't need them anymore, but it's a hassle to remove them completely. So just push them out the way and you'll be fine. Next, you wanna put back on the case and remember those screws and locations, you put them in. And you know once you do that, you could button back up the case. Now you press firmly to make sure that the case clips click on because these are held on with clips and then the screws reinforce the clips. So do that and then 
At this point, you're done with the hardware stuff. Now it's on the software. So within Windows, you notice we still have just drive C. And in order to fix that, we need to partition and format this drive. So you're looking for the setting called hard drive partitions here, create, and then what you're going to do is you are going to, you see the drive there, it's in black. So you right click it and you can create a new partition on the drive and format it and it'll show up as a Windows drive and it could be NTFS and it's a wizard, it's pretty simple. So, you know, once you've done that, you're ready to go to the next step, which is to change the default location for where your files are stored. But here you can see the process is pretty quick. You know, you can specify a volume label, it really doesn't matter. And then once you click next, you're able to see the drive format and it's, it's pretty quick. You notice you don't get the full 128 gigabytes, you get 119.24, but you do see that new drive D pop up. So that's where you'll be storing your files for the next step. So the next step really isn't necessary, but it's nice to have, it's nice to set the default where new content is going to be saved. So you look under storage settings, you can look for it in Cortana, where you will see where um, new settings uh, are being uh, change where new content is saved. So you go into storage settings is like the second option. And then you change new apps, you change new documents uh, to go to drive D and then you can change new music Here's a ham PC and new photos, videos and movies on a ham PC. Yes, you can change it to go to drive D and then you're pretty much done. I mean, you know, you're, you save it and you know, you're pretty much done. So you apply all of them and then your new software will respect these new locations, hopefully, or you could manually specify and you'll be good to go. So I hope this was helpful of making the most out of your $60 laptop. I know there's been a lot of buzz. A lot of people have been buying them up. They're still available at Micro Center. And of course, um, they're $60. You might be able to get them open box for a little bit less. Until next time, my friends, peace in 73s.